it's hard to know kind of the the exact timeline of, of when everything went so bad because you, you got him. I mean, his first couple months here, th- things did go well, and, and he had a lot of say. And the craziest part is the Greg Minuski, hi- Greg Minuski is Scott's guy. Mm-hmm. And Greg Minuski was just named defensive coordinator six weeks ago, roughly. I don't know, two months ago. And you've got to imagine Scott at that point still had a lot of say or, or at least was able to push his guy forward. Now the flip side of that is maybe they just didn't like any of the other candidates available. You know, once they lost Gus and lost Wade, they were going to go to Greg regardless. But that was Scott's guy, and that was just in mid-January. And, and here we are in early March, and this thing is completely unraveling. So it, it's crazy how how the, the accelerated timeline of this thing. And, and one thing they pointed out in that piece that, that you guys probably know this, I mean, we all kind of work in these circles where we know things we can't publicly talk about, and then they come out, and then we can all talk about them. But mm-hmm. when when the team did not issue any sort of statement or, or back – Back up Scott after the Cooley allegations, I think that was the end. I, I mm-hmm. think this thing was over once that happened. Joined by J.P. Finley, covers the Redskins for CSN Mid-Atlantic. Where does Gruden fit into this equation in terms of picking players, free agents, the personnel? You know, he kind of took a shot at McLuhan, too. I remember the quote about, oh, we got a, you know, first-round picks, got a, got a guard and a, and a guy who can't get on the field. I don't remember the exact quote paraphrasing it. But that was kind of a yeah. shot at McLuhan. Sure. Absolutely it was. And, you know, I, I, want, I think that's a – one thing that's getting lost in this because going back to Bruce is probably the, you know, the worst fear for so many fans is that Scott's personnel record in 2016 wasn't particularly great. Mm-hmm. The free agency wasn't very good. Last year's draft – and you should give a draft class – three years to really pan out and see what you got. And who knows, Doxon could come out this year and go for 1,300 receiving yards. We'll, we'll have to watch. But I think there was some frustration over last year's draft, certainly that, that kind of was starting to boil up a bit when this team felt like they should be competing for the playoffs and kind of that draft class was a bit of a hindrance. As, what is Jay Gruden's role? I think you know, plenty of reports show that his role has expanded. I think that's fairly obvious when you get an extension and the GM's on his way out that the head coach is going to get a little more say. One thing that was interesting, I can't remember if I read it or heard it, but at one point Scott's job title was saying that he had control over like the 53 roster, which is kind of unique in that most coaches have that and the GM puts the whole team together and maybe they consult. But uh, I think certainly Gruden will have control over the roster again if he didn't before. All right, JP, we could talk to you for two hours, but we got about four or five minutes left. Let's get into Kirk. So now we hear <laughs> yesterday that, um, you know, the, the Niners are signing Brian Hoyer to a two-year deal. Um, what does that tell you? Also, with, with this Washington Post article, it said that Scott was the one that wanted to extend Kirk and Bruce didn't, which was totally opposite of what I thought after Scott was kind of, uh, you know, ushered out of the the, uh, the park over there in Ashburn, and that's when they franchised him. So I thought it was the complete opposite. Turns out it wasn't. Um, so what's this all tell you? Kirk is telling people he doesn't want to be here. He wants to play in San Francisco. What do you think the timeline is here, and what's the end result? I mean, I'm starting to think it's fairly clear Kirk doesn't really want to be here, and I, I – I think the only way a deal gets done is with a mountain of cash. I, I think that's how you change Kirk's mind. I, if I he, agree. If, if he still doesn't want to be here and they come correct with 115 and 65 guaranteed, right. then it's an entirely different situation. But until we know that, until that offer's on the table and Kirk says no, you got to just wonder if they're still kind of penny anteing their way through this thing. But honestly, Lurch, I, I think that Brian Hoyer deal – Changes the changes the paradigm for the Niners wanting the trade. I wrote about this yesterday. What's the ceiling for the San Francisco 49ers with Kirk Cousins in 2017? Maybe six wins? Mm-hmm. I mean, they're still a really bad team that needs a complete rebuild from top to bottom. Yep. So if you're John Lynch and you're Kyle Shanahan and you both have six-year deals, ownership says they, be- they believe in you, you know you're there to, to see this thing through, maybe you... you you wait 
for a year of Hoyer running your offense, right. get that number two overall pick. You're able to invest in Jonathan Allen, Leonard Fournette, whoever you think is your guy, maybe, maybe even take a quarterback. Then a year from now, odds are you might be able to get Kirk then. Yeah, I think so, that's probably what, what they're going to do. Yeah, that's their bet. Yeah, but I, I'm it, with you. I'm with you, JP. <laughs> I, I almost dare Kirk, and I take it now as a given that if Kirk had his druthers, he'd want to move on. Right, but if I had my druthers, I might want to move on too. Who knows? But if they throw him a pile of money and they come correct, as you say, and they give him an Andrew Luck type deal, which by the way will eventually be passed by Stafford, by Ryan, and all these other guys, it'll just be temporary. But if they come correct and they give him this massive deal, is he really going to turn down sixty-five, seventy million guaranteed, twenty-five million dollar average? It's hard. I actually think no. And we've seen athletes do this before, I, you know, where they talk, they want to leave, they want to leave. But if they come with the money, that, that solves a lot of your problems. I, I agree. 